Okay, welcome to video number nine of the How to Wire Schneider PLC series. We are still working with the Modicon M221 series because that's what it's all about. And today we're going to be looking at doing syncing DC outputs with a relay model of Modicon. And before we begin, look at this. We have got a massive, massive caution that we want to throw out here. Syncing outputs can create danger from unwanted load operation during a fault if the DC supply is grounded on the negative. If your DC supply is floating and the negative is not grounded, you're going to be fine. You don't need to worry about this. But if it is internally grounded, which some DC power supplies are, or if you've got all the comments of all the different DC power supplies on your site tied together, that means that your negative could be tied back to ground through one of the other ones. And there can be some unwanted operation. Watch video two in this series. If you need more information, it's a long video. It goes through all the details on syncing and sourcing and the IEC positive and negative logic and lays out what the danger itself actually is. All right. This video is going to be based around any of your TM221R family of modicons that you're going to go and have you'll have one or two letters inside of there telling you whether it's going to be cartridge monolithic or cartridge monolithic with ethernet you're also going to have two numbers in there telling you the total number of inputs and outputs that you're going to go and have whatever the combination is of these does not matter as long as you're looking at an r type this is going to explain how to go and connect it just if you have one of the larger the 24 of the 40s there's going to be more points to go and connect onto it Let's start by taking a look inside of our manual. Inside of the Schneider manual, they do give us some direction as to AWG sizes that we are going to be utilizing inside of these or that we should be using as a minimum with these. We do have a relay type that is going to go and have a set of multiple relay contacts fed off of a single common on my outputs. This is going to be labeled as common. This will be, you know, Q0, Q, oops, sorry, that's a terribly drawn Q. Why don't I erase that? Q1 and Q2, like that, that are all going to be off of there. So this common over here that they're talking about, we should be wiring that one with a minimum of AWG 16, suitable for 7 amps. And then these individual outputs that we are going to go and have, these Q0, Q1, etc., minimum of AWG 20 that we are going to be looking for. If you go smaller than these, the amount of current that you're going to pass through there can go and cause heat. You get voltage drop, but you also get heat created on the conductors, which can be transferred inside of your PLC, bringing things to a temperature that they basically lose their rating. They become unsafe. Not only do we have the wiring gauges we have to look at, we'd also have to take a look at the actual ratings. Now, our rated output voltage is going to be either 24 volts DC or 240 volts AC. The AC rating is always going to go and be way higher because the AC rating relies upon the fact that I am going to be crossing through the zero axis anywhere between 100 to 120 times a second, depending on whether you are 50 or 60 hertz AC, which means that any arcs that are created are going to be much harder to sustain. Sustain. Easier to break, harder to sustain, in other words, easier on my set of relay contacts. If I'm dealing with DC, I'm limited down to 24 volts that I'm going to go and have. And that's what we're going to be working with inside of this system. Okay, here is my data sheet that they give me on the negative logic or on the syncing. And remember that syncing is where I'm going to go and connect a negative to my common. And we see that in this diagram over there. We can also conveniently ignore this line over here. They show you the AC wiring options on the same sheet as the DC wiring options. We're not wiring it both uh, types at the same time. You pick one or the other. So we've got our DC negative that we're going to bring into the common over there. And then we're going to switch that negative over to each of these other outputs inside of the actual unit, which means that each of those units are each of those outputs when they come out, is going to go and feed out to their actual contactor over there. And then that's going to be in line with, they show a set of fuses over here. Now they're showing individual fuses for each one of these outputs, which is a good plan if you've got the room, the space, the budget, and the necessity. In other words, if it's a critical type of system, you might want to throw individual fuses on each one, rated at no more than two amps a piece over here. Uh, and then from there, all those fuses combine all the way back through my positive over to here. 
There is, um, in this video over here, I just didn't have the space to place all the individual fuse holders. We're only going to rely on the single fuse that we're going to go and have on our overcurrent protection. And as long as all of your wiring is gauged high enough, you should be all right. But the individual 2 amp fuses that they have over here are to go and protect the 2 amp ratings of each of these individual components they have here. So best practice is obviously going to be to go and use these. Uh, however, in the field, it is not uncommon to go and see only a single fuse protecting the group. We also want to go and note this, that uh, in order to improve the life of the contacts and protect from potential inductive load damage or inductive kick, that collapsing magnetic field, they suggest to connect a freewheeling diode in parallel to each inductive DC load. Inductive means has a coil and any type of a contact or relay has a coil inside of it. And that's what we're seeing with this little symbol that's connected right next to the side over there. They want us to go and place something around there. What those look like is a relatively small package this over here is the package itself it just snips onto the side of your contactor over there we've got the la4d style that we have over here and the la4d style is going to go and clip if this is going to be my dc contactor here's my coil a1 and a2 that i'm going to go and have on there and what they have is a little set of notches inside of here and that metal prong that we saw in there goes into there so you push them in click them on and you're done it takes up no extra space inside of your control cabinet but it does protect the uh, relay contacts over the lifetime particularly in dc ac you can sometimes get away without it dc you want to make sure that you are going to apply it or if uh, you're buying contactors that they already have a built-in snubber circuit on them. All right, let's move over to our wiring. Now we're gonna start with the relay style that we have over here that has the onboard output. That onboard output is limited to 250 milliamperes, which means that it is not going to be suitable to be driving large loads. We use this DC supply over here just to go and power up what we have for our inputs. A lot of cases because we're going to go and use it to power up our inputs, but then we're going to be switching AC through our outputs. In this case, we're switching DC through our outputs, which means we need to have a stronger DC power supply. So we're going to go and put in a secondary supply. Power wiring has been dealt with inside of previous videos, but it's basically AC in through a DIN rail breaker in through a fuse holder, powering up the AC power supply that we have on these PLCs. And then for my DC, we're going to take AC in. We are going to go and run that into a DC power supply. Out of that DC power supply, we're then taking it to a fuse holder that we are going to have over here. Now we are dealing with a sinking style. And a sinking style means that we're going to go and connect our common to negative. So we're switching our common through. We're going to start with that first. So that's going to be going from here up and into here. We've now set it up for syncing, which means that now our positive, we are going to go and take directly out to our field device. This is my coil positive and my coil negative. It's a 24 volt DC coil that I have on my contactor over here. That positive and negative that I have needs to be observed for polarity, but we should also be using it in conjunction with my overload block that I'm going to have down here. The overload block is simply going to be a current sensing component hooked up in line with your contactor that measures the actual current going out to your loads. If it gets to be too high of a load current, it is going to trip opening this normally a closed contact up. So we're going to wire through it for the sake of safety. We're going to take our positive in, take it into my normally closed contact, then out of my normally closed contact, we are then going to take it up to my A1 over there. And then out of my A2, the negative side of my coil, we are now going to go and take that negative back to my PLC. And there we have a complete sinking output style of PLC. Now the danger with this one, as we have mentioned in the very first video, is that if this DC power supply is grounded, connected down to ground or bonded, which is the proper term, uh, earthed, PG, whichever you use, wherever you're watching this in the world. Um, but if it is grounded down, there is a problem in that if this line coming back from here were to be accidentally grounded down, that you would then have a current path that would be able to go and flow through here and back up through here, back to your DC power supply. You'd be able to go and have operation of that load off of a fault, which is a dangerous thing. So watch that video number two, just to go and get that cleared up for you. We're going to remove that ground because we don't like to use the sinking output with that grounded system. 
While we're in here, we're also going to take a quick look at these two sets of inputs that we have over here, or these two sets of contacts, actually. These ones over here are going to close whenever the contactor powers up. So I could go and run these back to my inputs, which is then going to go and give me indication of when this contactor is pulled in and my load is running. The other set that I have down here is going to be these ones, which are going to be open until I get a fault, a trip on my overload. And if my overloads trip out, they're going to go and close. So I can monitor those in the inputs as well, which would then allow me to go and you know stop my process if I sense an overload caused by a motor. Let's wire those in really, really quickly over here, even though it's not the heart of this video, we'll wire them in as sinking inputs because those are our safest type. That sinking means my zero or my negative volts goes to my common. And then we are going to go and take a hot stinger out of this DC power supply that we have up here. And we are going to just distribute it around to my individual components. So we'll take it into that screw and we will take it into that screw. Once we have that done, we can then take these individual components all the way back in. So here is one of my lines. We'll take that in, we'll put them to I5. We will take this one over here and we'll put it into another input. We'll put that one into I4 over there, which will allow me to now fully monitor whatever is going on with my actual load switching device, the contactor that I have over here. All right, we're gonna erase that though because that is not the heart of this video. That is just kind of bonus material that we have to that this video over here. Last thing we're gonna do on the here is we're gonna trace through our power path. We see that we've got positive going in through a fuse holder. We have got that positive run in through the normally closed overload contact block up to my coil, through my coil, through my negative coming back then, running through the inside of my PLC and then coming all the way back up to my negative of my power supply. It is a complete path for current flow. You should be visually tracing this on you know any connection that you make, just that you know that you've got everything set. All right, that covers my cartridge style. This is the cartridge style over here. Let's take a look at the monolithic style. Very similar. The monolithic styler is different than the cartridge style though in that it does have a DC power that is brought to it. it doesn't have that ac it also doesn't have its own onboard dc it's just got a couple of comments that are going to be here so it means that anytime we're using a monolithic style we automatically already have this dc power supply here to go and power that up and you can trace that here is my din rail breaker bringing my ac in then i convert to dc and then my dc power supply i could follow it through a fuse holder here powering up this actual PLC. We'll erase all of that. We see that we also have got the pallet positive being carried over to a fuse holder that we are going to go and use for what we're looking at. Now we're working with a sinking style and a sinking style means that I'm going to go and attach a negative to my common. So I'm going to take a negative from my power supply over there and I'm going to go and attach it to my common. We'll take it to the common in group two over here of this uh, setup over here. So I'll just circle that with a blue just so you can see which one we're connecting into. So we've connected it into group two common over here, which means this is the common for all of these Q4 through Q7 that we are going to go and have. What we then do is we are then going to take our positive out. So here's my positive that I have got here. We're going to go and distribute that one. Uh, ultimately, we do want to take it back to the coil over here, the positive of the coil A1, the negative of the coil that's going to be my A2, but we do want to take it through those normally closed overload contacts first. So we're going to do that. We'll take it down through the bottom over here into my normally closed. From my normally closed, we are then going to take it into my A1 up top over there. And then from A1, we're going to take this thing all the way back. I'm going to use a dark blue for this one just because these terminals are so dark, but we're going to take a line back from there into one of my outputs. And so now we have got a complete power pathway. We'll trace through it. <clears throat> Starting on my DC power supply, we've got positive being brought in, positive being carried through the normally closed overload contact, carrying into my coil, going through the coil to energize that, coming back on my negative, going through the PLC relay contacts, and then running from there all the way back to my DC power supply. So complete path for current all the way through. While we're on this one, we can also do the same thing as we did on the previous one, where we can take a look at those sets of contacts. These ones that I can use to monitor whether or not the coil or whether or not the contactor is energized, and these ones that I can use to monitor whether or not we have tripped our overloads. And to go and wire those, all we would need to do is jump another positive around. So we've got our 
DC positive brought into here, what we can do is we can take that DC positive, we can jump it around to one of my normally open, and then we can jump from there up to one of my other normally open. Doesn't matter whether you come into the top or the bottom of, you know, 13, 14, or into 97 or 98. It's a normally open dry set of contacts that we are going to have. We've got that distributed around, and then all we would need to do is take from here back into one of my inputs. We'll take that one to I1, or sorry, I0, and we could take this one over here into I number one. And the very last thing that we would need to do is we would need to make sure that this common over here is set up to be tied back to my negative. I'm going to take from here back to there because if I don't tie that, these ones over here will not be able to send a signal. So this would have to go and tie back into my negative over here. Internally, common zero and common zero are tied together. You can see that on some of the inputs ones, but that's just bonus. You know, when we're hooking up a contact, it's not the heart of this video. We'll erase all of that and we'll just go back to this as being my actual DC syncing style of outputs. Like the previous one, if this DC power supply was grounded over here, that would mean that any ground along this line here, this blue line here, would automatically be able to go and track back to Earth. We can do that really quickly. Here's positive being carried in. Positive can carry through, through the normally close, through my contactor, through this coil. And even if the PLC wasn't turned on, I could hit that ground fault, and then I could travel through the Earth or through the grounding path back up to my negative like that, which would mean that my load, my contactor could be turned on by a fault on the line. This is what makes these syncing outputs dangerous. So if we're doing syncing outputs, make sure that you have got a DC power supply that is not grounded down inside of it. All right, that's the end of this one.